So how do you want to do this? You just, uh, you going to do most of the talking? No, I think we should both talk. Okay. Hello, Auburn Alliance Church. Welcome to another 5 to 5. It's been a while since we've done a 5 to 5. It has been a long time I know. since we have come to you at 5 to 5. That's, that is true. But we thought this was worthwhile to begin to, uh, well, to share some of the stuff that has been going on. There's going to be a letter that's going to be going out to the congregation. It's going to be giving you information and stuff that is happening. And then also to announce an upcoming congregational meeting scheduled for June the 15th. So so what's the letter is all about? All right. What's the letter all about? You want me to tell you what the letter is all about? <laughs> well, we have good news. We have really good news to share. Yes. And uh, some of the good news that we're sharing is a thank you to you because yeah. of your dedication to the Auburn Alliance Church family through prayer, through giving, through participation, through a lot of conversations that yeah. we've had yeah. with people individually and also through our leadership teams. Um, we were in the process to switch our mortgage is one of the things mm -hmm. that we wanted to talk about. Uh, we're moving away from a traditional mortgage company like Key Bank yeah. Yeah. to another company that is only for Alliance Churches. Right. So we're, what are we doing? So the company is called the Orchard Foundation. They're under the umbrella of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. And so we have transferred our mortgage over to the Orchard Foundation. We used to be with Key Bank, uh, both as for our accounts and also for our mortgage. Yeah. But uh, we have switched over our mortgage over to, to the Orchard Foundation. It's also a cheaper uh, interest rate on our loan. And also it allows us to, be, to work with them and for them to work with us in a more direct way as it relates to uh, in, in helping people uh, in the area of estate planning and finances and those kinds of things. And you're going to hear more about over that over the next year or two, uh, more about the connection that we have with the Orchard Foundation. But uh, the, that's a real joy. One is we're saving money interest wise. And God has really been blessing us as we still been able to bring down that mortgage uh, somewhere in the, just over the 300,000 range, about 330. Uh, in that range is what we still owe. But the fact of the matter is, is that God is still blessing us and we praise God for that. Amen. And then we're also going to be changing banks. Well, if we go back to the, the orchard, one of the, my favorite things about using the Orchard Foundation is that we have an opportunity to take the interest that we're paying to Key Bank, which just all goes to profit, to take some of this interest that we're giving to the Orchard Foundation is going into the Alliance yeah. and it's supporting the building of other Alliance churches. Right. So even by making interest payments to the Orchard Foundation, we are now going to be helping other churches get buildings and invest in that way. So this is more of a kingdom opportunity that we have. And I'm really excited about that. That is great. With every That's loan, great. you have to pay interest, but this is a way we can say our interest is going to a good thing. That's right. And because we're not going to be with Key Bank, we've, we've chosen to also switch over to a different uh, uh, bank. And we're going to be going over to Tompkins. Yep. And uh, we we're going to leave Key. And if you're wanting to know why, you can ask us in person. Sure. You know, and talk to our financial uh, team uh, if you have any questions about that. But uh, it has to do with some frustrations that we were experiencing with the way they were handling our our, our account and it just didn't seem like it was the right thing and we yeah. felt that it was wise to make that uh, to make that transition yeah so what else is going to be in the letter is also uh, just giving you the uh, the in a sense the awareness and the knowledge that on June the 15th it's a Wednesday night at seven o'clock we're going to be having a congregational meeting in that congregational meeting one of the things that we're going to address is is the issue of when our an annual congregational meetings will take place. Typically, our annual congregational meetings take place in the fourth Wednesday of January. But that creates some problems with financial booking and those kinds of things. Yeah. And so what has been requested to us 
when I say us, to the elder board and to the board of ministries, by our, by our financial team, is that we move into the year, uh, the end of the year. And so what we're going to be addressing is a bylaw change to change the date of our annual congregational meeting. And the date that we will have set aside will be the first Wednesday of December. Yeah. This year it happens to fall on December the 7th, which is a Wednesday night, uh, the, uh, Wednesday when we will have our next um, annual congregational meeting. But our next formal meeting will be to deal with that bylaw change will be June the 15th yeah. uh, that is coming up. Now you can see it, it makes a lot of sense for us to move our congregational meeting date, the annual meeting date, because we're trying to put into effect a budget for the following year. Correct. And what's happened is we haven't voted on a budget till the end of January, but we're already supposed to be operating under that budget starting January 1st. Right. So that might sound easy on paper, but it really becomes difficult when you ask our financial team to catch up for the changes that have taken place and all those kinds of things. So this really makes a lot of sense for our financial team to do that. So we're going to talk about it. Yep. And hopefully we'll be able to do it. That's right. So we, you can't change a bylaw unless you have a congregational meeting. Therefore, that's why we're having the congregational meeting yeah. on June the 15th. Another thing that we're going to be addressing is the role in the ministry of the deaconesses. The I have been working, and Pastor Jim and I have been working with the deaconesses as it relates particularly to their role. And we're going to talk more about that at the congregational meeting, but it will involve changing some of the bylaws as it relates to the role of the deaconesses. And so, therefore, we saw this as an opportunity, since we will be having a congregational meeting on June the 15th, that we address some of those bylaw changes as it relates to the deaconesses. And you'll be able to know, you'll be able to see those things that will be posted in advance and, and what are those things that are going to be changing. Uh, particularly, it is as it relates to the spiritual ministry, the service ministry, and, and how, they, how they function um, as deaconesses as well. So these are some of the things that we will be talking about at the congregational meeting. Now, you're, you're talking about changing bylaws. And if you didn't know, um, you know we, we are governed by bylaws as to things that we do here in our church. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to see a copy of those bylaws, you just need to go right. to the website. Those bylaws are posted on the website. If you can't find them on the website, you can talk to one of us and we'll get you a copy. It would be good for you to have a copy of the bylaws before you come into this meeting so you have a chance to review them yeah. and see you know what we're trying to talk about here for a bylaw change. Yeah. And lastly, we want to talk at the congregational meeting about the up and coming possibility of us hiring a worship leader. And so uh, it happens to be on this weekend, uh, the weekend that we're in right now, uh, to that we, will ha we have the opportunity to see uh, a gentleman by the name of PJ Barner, who will be uh, sharing with us at our community worship service um, on Saturday night. And so this, uh, this is a great opportunity for us as a church family to talk about that. Not so much about just him, but in particular about the role of the worship leader and the anticipation that we have about uh, in the next couple, couple of months us having the opportunity to be able to hire somebody in that particular capacity and area of ministry. Now, somebody's already asked me already, are, are we ready to hire PJ? Is that why we're looking at him this weekend? And the answer to that is no. We're, we're following the, the process outlined in our bylaws, where our pastor seeking committee, which is made up of our elders and our board of ministries, right. has um, been meeting to talk about what we are looking for. And we're, we haven't developed it yet, but we're going to put together a job description. So this is just a preview opportunity. Uh, PJ had an open time to be able to yeah. come and for us to be able to meet him a little bit, for him to meet us a little bit. So we took advantage of this, but we're not going to be starting the formal process of looking for a worship leader until later on this summer. So this is just kind of like a preview opportunity at yeah. this point. Yeah. So those are some of the things that are, going to, that are outlined in this letter that is going out. We want you to be informed. We want you to know what is coming, what is happening, and for you to be involved in that. We'd love to hear your thoughts, your input, your ideas as such. And most of all, we want you to know how thankful we are, Absolutely. how appreciative of we, we are of, of you, who you are. God has really blessed us financially 
as a church over the last three months in an incredible way. Yeah. And uh, we just want you to know that we pray for you. We are thankful for you. And, um, and if uh, just we pray God's blessing upon you, you and your family. Hey, one last bit of good news. I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but we have had a number of new families coming into our church recently and they walk in the door and they just love being part of Auburn Alliance. Yeah. I talked to one new family today and they said to me they love how open we are and the sense of community yeah. that we have. We also hear people saying that this is a place where grace is offered. Mm -hmm. And we are just rejoicing with the fact that God is bringing about growth in our midst. Yes. We did a couple links classes and we have new members, people who want to be new members within our church. And we just really sense that the, the time of hibernation that we were experiencing during COVID, it, we're, we're like waking up from that right. time of hibernation right now. And we're seeing God lead our church in a direction. And other people are getting excited about it. And we want to share with you how much we appreciate that you're part of it. Amen. And we got to see where God's taken us. We know it's going to be a good place, but we're glad that we're doing it together.